Thursday, we had Finance Minister Praveen Gordon say the country's high unemployment rate showed more urgent work needed to be done to restructure the economy and create jobs, especially for the nation's youth. This, of course, following data released last week, which revealed that unemployment rose to 25.2% in the first quarter. Well, we've today seen the release of AdCorp Holdings Employment Index, and to run us through what that's now revealed, Loan Sharp Labor Market Analyst at AdCorp joins us in studio. Thanks, Loan, for joining us this afternoon. So we know that the index uh, aims to reveal key employment trends in South Africa. What have been the key features this month? Well, during this month, uh, employment stalled after uh, several months of decline in permanent employment and about five months, consecutive months of increases in temporary employment. So it's difficult to identify a trend uh, just from the last month alone, but over the last year we've seen a significant swing in the economy from permanent full-time jobs to temporary part-time work. Mm -hmm. And that's always a good sign of uh, a recovery underway at a very slow point. The problem with Statistics South Africa data is that it understates uh, non-traditional non forms of employment. Mm -hmm. So one of our index's advantages is that it properly reflects temporary and part-time work, which has been picking up for about five months, although it, uh, it slowed uh, and stalled in, in April. So picking up, despite the fact that we saw a data last week reveal that 25% drop in employment, uh, or rise in unemployment, rather. Now the concern, though, is that with this recovery, while it is seeing uh, some uh, movement in terms of creating temporary and uh, you know and permanent jobs as well there's an inadequate level in terms of the labor intensive industries that are seeing mm. uh, that are seeing a build up and growth so let's go into that and the concern that now raises well we've got a total national catastrophe in unemployment I mean uh, the figures that most people are concentrating on are the 833,000 jobs that were lost over the last 12 months but in addition to that, more than a million people actually left the labor market altogether, 60% mm -hmm. of them because they're just not looking for work anymore. They, they've become so despondent about ever finding work. Uh, so our unemployment uh, problem over the last 12 months is closer to 1.8 million people uh, than 800,000, which is a catastrophe by any measure. Now, what's happening in South Africa and to some extent elsewhere around the world is that there's a disconnect. Uh, the economy is starting to show mm -hmm. signs of recovery but employment actually is stalled or declining still uh, six months into the recovery. And uh, there's some very important questions we need to ask about that trend. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is cyclical. Uh, we're seeing in our index uh, last month that consumer sensitive sectors, financial services, retail and wholesale trade, these sectors actually shed jobs uh, during April and that tells us the consumer is under very severe pressure still at the stage of the economy and, and uh, economic recovery and we're seeing that in other statistics as well. But uh, interestingly and probably reflecting the fact that the rest of the world is recovering a bit faster than South Africa is, our manufacturing and export sensitive sectors increased employment again uh, during April. Mm -hmm. uh, that has to do with vehicle and other uh, motor and other manufacturing sectors which are improving. Um, yes, so we can't make too much out of what happened in, in just one month, yeah. but um, uh, for me the bigger problem is, uh, is a long-term one unrelated to the recent recession. Uh, South African companies are finding all sorts of clever ways to reduce their dependence on labor. Uh, Let's get into that because yes. that is a very big issue at the moment. I mean, while you've got the South African consumer that's relatively subdued still uh, putting pressure on your financial services sector yeah. and your retail sector, there's also the cost of labor to consider where we've had increased union activism and labor legislation uh, con uh, continuing to contribute to escalating costs for businesses as they recover. So where the number of people employed in South Africa has to be the number one social, economic and Absolutely. political objective, there isn't much consensus on how we actually go about achieving this. So what's AdCorp's view there? Well, I think uh, there is a consensus in the business community. Mm -hmm. I, I just think business do doesn't often have the microphone. Uh, you know, we have uh, a very militant uh, Minister of Labor, we have a very militant Director General of Labor, we have very vocal trade union leaders, but um, you know, it, all of that noise uh, conceals the fact that businesses, I think, agree on what the causes of unemployment are and what the solutions are. Mm -hmm. uh, businesses' opinions not often, uh, you know, uh, elicited. 
Um, and I think the two, the two ingredients for me in that is that uh, we need a new appreciation in South Africa. Um, in other countries, it's called right to work legislation. Mm -hmm. um, in countries with very high unemployment, um, they pass legislation that gives employees the right to work and basically the right to opt out of some of the legislative environment. Um, you know, you could argue that some of our unionization in South Africa, even though it's constitutionally protected, is unconstitutional. Yeah. The closed shop agreement, um, where unions actually prevent workers from joining an industry if, um, if they don't join that union. Now, union wages uh, are about 40% higher than non-unionized wages. Um, and that makes it extremely difficult for non-unionized workers to join, to join industries for job seekers to find work. Um, so yes, I think, I think we've, had, we've had two problems over the last year in particular. Wage increases, wage demands by trade unions have been well above inflation, well above labor productivity. And uh, you know, that, that, yeah. that cannot continue. And we also have very restrictive labor market regulations that I think have come back to bite us. So that's the voice of business. We've got government on the other hand seeming to prefer state-led uh, solutions. We had uh, D Defense Minister Lindiwe Sisulu recently proposed uh, reimposing the mandatory national service. Uh, how viable, in your opinion, are government-based programs such as public work programs and special uh, government grants as well for companies that employ unskilled uh, youth? Well, I mean, it's very, it's very difficult to mm -hmm. say, and uh, academics and others uh, disagree on this point. Some believe that if you have a strong government-led initiative, private sector companies will respond uh, in time. I think that's very dangerous. I think we're playing with fire. You know, we're dealing with um, an economy that has been subjected since 1994 to increasing globalization, increasing competitive pressures from abroad. Um, to some extent, South Africa's labor capital mix prior to 1994 overutilized labor, and so we've been having adjustments through, uh, by corporations. I think it's very dangerous to play with, um, to play with these patterns. I mean, mm -hmm. South Africa's labor intensity, like some countries around the world, has been declining for about 50 years. But over the last year, we experienced the biggest single decline in labor intensity uh, in, in 50 years, mm -hmm. by 8.1 percent. So it, it takes 36 percent fewer workers today to create a unit of economic activity than it did 50 years ago. Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, the question that, that we have to ask with these government-led programs is how effective have they been? Yeah. I mean, uh, um, uh, the unemployment rate, rate has gone up in South Africa from 7% in the 1970s to 13% in 1994 in the advent of democracy to 25% today. None of these state-led programs have, have made any positive impact. So certainly lots of question marks there. In the meantime, President Jacob, Zuma yesterday raised the possibility of further job losses as a result of the global economic recession and also sovereign debt problems hitting uh, some countries as well. What's your outlook moving forward? Well, I think, yes, I mean, markets are very jittery and they uh, have a lot of uncertainty about how the economic recovery will unfold in the developed countries. But, uh, I mean, there's, there's no question that recoveries are underway. Mm -hmm. They may be tentative, a bit uneven and patchy in places, but there are recoveries underway in the rest of the world. I think it's, you know, uh, cr crying after the horse is bolted in a way to yeah. talk about the risk of job losses now. I think the worst is behind us.